live from the fame lounge. Yeah, the 3 a.m. slot. Yeah. <laughs> sunshine on a cloudy day but it's cold outside I got the month of May I guess you said what can make me Talking about my girl I got so much honey All the bees envy me I got a sweeter song that I can sing Than the birds in the tree Were there like a load of studios around here already? No, well, there, Rick, his was the first, and uh, Quinn Ivey, the fellow who owned the other studio, was a DJ at the radio station here, and he and Rick were friends, and uh, he thought, well, if Rick's doing it, I want a studio yeah. too. And Quinn had a record store across the street from where the studio was to go called Toontown, and that was the place that we would go hang out in the afternoons and listen to the new records and stuff and just, yeah. uh, it was kind of a hangout place. Uh, but, uh, Grady Spooner had a couple of roommates. Grady Smith, David <laughs> Grady Ivey. Grady Smith and David Ivey, they, yeah. they lived on Poplar Street in Florence. And uh, they, uh, they got hold of some weed and I, none of us had ever smoked any weed and so they, <laughs> they came and told me all about it. And I said, Oreos taste great after you eat, <laughs> after you eat the That's weed, amazing. and you can he, you can see the music. So I wanted to try it, mm -hmm. and uh, we were working with James and Bobby Purify here, and so James and Bobby gave us me and Roger a joint, and Roger and I smoked it outside the studio, and uh, pretty soon we were in laying on the floor giggling, <laughs> and um, somebody the door used to be over there to the studio, and somebody came and knocked on the door, and I thought it was one of the guys playing a joke on us and so I went and grabbed the door and jerked it open and there was a policeman there in uniform and it was Rick's, Rick Hall's uh, father-in-law. He was a policeman and, I, I, and it just scared me to death. It was the first time I'd ever smoked pot and there's a cop. <laughs> that was 1966. That must have been quite a whitey you had there. Yeah. yeah. Sobered up right and quick. Yeah. But it seems like, this, yeah, so it all, this sprung from this well, but it seemed to happen real quick. Well, the Quinn Ivey, Rick had his studio, then Quinn Ivey had his studio, and uh, the place that became our studio, a man named Fred Beavis opened it and went the purpose of doing country music and gospel music. And after he built the place, he didn't really know what to do with it, so he approached my partners, Jimmy Johnson and Roger Hawkins, to buy it. And, uh, Jimmy thought, well, I need a bass player and a keyboard player, and then at that time Spooner had gone to Memphis. So he, they approached me and uh, Barry Beckett, and so we went together and bought Muscle Shoals Sound and left here. Uh, the reason we left here, we weren't angry or anything. Yeah. Rick wanted to sign us to an exclusive deal 
with a set amount of money per year, and we were already making more than that working for all these different people. So we said, well, that's not a, we don't want to do that. We'll just start our own studio and work with all these people that, that he don't want to work with. And that's how it started with us. Didn't, didn't Keith write the third verse of Wild Horses? In the, in, in the bathroom, yeah. yes. Uh, the, the studio only had one bathroom upstairs and one downstairs, and so we would use the bathroom upstairs, since it was right in the middle of the studio, we'd use it as an isolation booth. We'd put a guitar in there, an amp, or a mic. Yeah. They sound great for recording, toilets in general. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess they do. The, this was a very small room, and that was, we, that week that they were, actually they were only here four or five days, but when they came and recorded, uh, the Stones came in, they came from Miami where they'd been playing, and they had chartered a Boeing Super Constellation airplane to fly from Miami up here, and it's one of these big four engine propeller planes with the three tails on the back, and yeah. we were supposed to not tell anybody they were coming because they didn't have permits to be recording here. So we, we didn't tell anybody, but when, you, when a rock and roll band lands in a plane like that at the little airport out here, people do know they, they, yeah. they, the word got out.